Katie. If you've been watching my videos for the last couple of weeks, you know that we just started a Travel 101 series, a how to live in your car, how to go on a long road trip, that kind of stuff. A series every Tuesday for the next like month or two. And last week's video was about mindset. So it was how to move into your car, how to start going on a long road trip mentally and emotionally. Today's video is going to be how to move into your car like logistically. Like what stuff do you need and what stuff do you not need? And so if you are interested in this video and any other travel videos or lifestyle videos that I might do, I hope that you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. Uh, but yeah, let's just get into this like, what do you need to move into your car video? So this video is going to be in three parts. Number one, we're gonna talk about the car in general, or van or bus or whatever. Number two, I'm gonna talk about what you should get rid of. And number three, I'm gonna talk about what you should buy. Um, obviously, as always, these are just my opinions, but I have been living out of this car on and off for the past eight years. And so I know what works for me and I wanna share it with you guys because I know that the things that I've done will work for some of you guys as well. And so the first things, first and foremost, if you are thinking of moving into a car or moving into a vehicle, whether it's indefinitely or maybe for a month long road trip or maybe you know that every weekend you're going to be traveling and you want a car that uh, that you can kind of live out of whether it's again full time or just kind of part time the important thing for you and I'm not going to give too much advice on this the important thing for you is to get a car that you like wow Katie that's good advice Thanks. So this car I already owned when I started traveling and I did not see the need to get a new one. This is a Toyota Yaris. It's very tiny. It's a tiny baby car, but I am short and I don't own a lot of stuff. And so this car worked out totally fine for me. I like the gas mileage. I like the ease. I like having a Toyota. They last forever. And so when you're getting a vehicle to move into, you just have to think about your priorities. Is your priority good gas mileage? Is your priority a lot of room to sleep? Is your priority having something much bigger that might have like a kitchen or something in it? It's totally depends on your own priorities. And so just kind of write those down, make a list, um, and then see if whatever you currently own could work for that. And if not, see something that's in your budget. Go shop for a car and see what works for you. So the only other advice besides make a list of your priorities and get a car that checks off all those things on the list is that make sure that you always do the upkeep on your car. Always get your oil changed. Always get new tires when you need them. Like really, really make sure that your car is is up to date on everything that it needs to be because obviously any car could just break down in the middle of nowhere but if you do all the upkeep on your car it will lessen that risk for sure and so just make sure that you take care of your car as much as you can on the road and that's really easy like I just go to Jiffy Lube most of the time honestly and they're kind of everywhere so it is quite easy to do the upkeep on your car you don't need to always be like oh crap I live in Omaha I need to keep going back to Omaha you don't need to do that um, maybe for certain things like car registration and stuff you might have to go back for that but in terms of just like oil changes and stuff like that you can get that done anywhere again I just always use Jiffy Lube and I've never ever had a problem with them and so just make sure that you do all the upkeep on your car and make sure that you choose a car that's right for you because a lot of people are like how do you live in that tiny car and I'm like because I like it like we're all you know like we're all different and we all have different priorities and this car for now at least fits my priorities and so um, yeah that's really all my advice on cars that's it it's quite simple <laughs> oh and PS if I seem a little off today um, my sinuses are um, having a field day in my face <laughs> so I feel a little extra like weird I guess so if I'm a, I don't know so if my mood's a little different that's why my allergies are punching me in the face basically the next topic which is also going to be pretty short is getting rid of all your stuff um, you guys know I talk about Marie Kondo a lot who wrote the life-changing magic of tidying up is that the name of her book you think that I talk about her so much that I would know the name of her book life-changing magic art of tidying up magic is it magic or art I think it's magic I think it's tidying up but anyway I have that book in my description most of the things I'm going to talk about today by the way because again the third section is going to be what I suggest you buy a lot of that stuff is going to be in my Amazon recommended if you want to check it out um, just to let you know um, it might be easier to be like oh what did Katie say and then it's just going to be in my Amazon for you guys um, but that book by Marie Kondo, and I know she has a Netflix series now. I don't personally like the series, but I loved the book. And if you don't want to read the book, I totally understand. But I read it and I loved it. And the gist of it, the real, real quick summary is only keep stuff that brings you joy or that you need, obviously. You know, like dish soap is not going to bring you joy probably, but it's necessary. It's useful. It's handy. It's something that makes your life easier. So that's something that's good to keep. But everything else, whether it's video games, it's books, it's makeup, anything like extra that's not necessary, her advice on that 
is to hold it in your hand, whatever it is, what do I have? Here, hold, well, all this stuff is necessities. Um, here, this, hold this in your hand. This is texturizing dry shampoo. <laughs> hold it in your hand. Does it bring you joy? Do you like it? Do you use it? Do you like how you look in it? If it's clothes, um, do you enjoy playing with it? If it's a game or something, uh, hold it in your hand. If it does not bring you joy, get rid of it. Throw it out, sell it, give it to someone else who might get joy from it. But if it does bring you joy, good, then keep it. That's great. And I really recommend doing that. Honestly, just even if you're staying in a house or an apartment or something, I recommend doing that every couple months with the stuff that you own to make sure that you love all the stuff that you own and that you use all the stuff that you own. But especially when you're living in a car or a, a vehicle or just something smaller, I recommend doing it like every few weeks um, because you might accumulate things. You might have kept something that you didn't even realize you kept but then you've never used it it might be under the seat or something so I really recommend to organize stuff in your car in your vehicle in your van whatever as often as possible but in terms of what you're gonna keep when you move into your car obviously you're gonna have to drastically downsize so it depends on how you want to do this if you're just doing something for weekends then you're just gonna pack like a normal little weekend bag and go into your car and then you'll have some of the things that I recommend later to keep in your car but if you're moving into your car if you are getting rid of a home base if you're moving moving into your car or going like super long term in your car, then you're gonna have to get rid of most of your stuff. And so that might mean for you, if you know I'm going away for six months, I don't wanna get rid of all my furniture, I want to rent a storage unit, then that's fine. That's what works for you or leave it in your parents' garage or something like that. But if it's gonna be like an indefinite thing and you don't wanna keep your stuff, then you gotta get rid of really all your stuff. You gotta get rid of all your furniture, all your pots and pans, all your silverware, everything like that, and just keep what's necessary. And so the very obvious obvious things that are necessary are like clothes, some toiletries, some shoes, and even with that kind of stuff, some people when they live in their car, they really just have what fits in a backpack or a duffel bag. Um, someone like me, I like to have a little bit more stuff than that. And so like I love makeup, and so I do have a pretty big makeup case because I like having all those options. But in terms of say like purses, I love purses, but I'm okay having fewer options, so I just have a few purses. It totally depends on what you want, what your priorities are for the car or for your vehicle, and and what brings you joy and so obviously again even something like clothes we all need clothes right but it's gonna depend for you if you're gonna bring two pairs of pants and five shirts and just do laundry once a week or if you're gonna bring 15 shirts and three pairs of pants and maybe see if you can go a month it totally is up to you I'm kind of the latter I probably have about 15 shirts or so and then I have like a few pairs of jeans a couple pairs of shorts and so I'm able to do laundry about once a month because I usually when I'm on the road will wear my shirts two to three times depending depending how sweaty I get <laughs> um, but usually I can wear my shirts two or three times before they need to be washed the only thing that I do recommend having a lot of even if you're like oh, I'm only gonna have two pairs of shorts and two pairs of pants and four shirts still bring a lot of underwear still bring a lot of underwear. Um, I always recommend having about a month's worth of underwear. For me at least, that's what I feel comfortable having because again, pants, jeans, you can rewear a thousand times without having to wash them, especially if they're like good quality jeans. When I'm in the car, I definitely recommend having a lot of underwear um, and socks too if you're someone who wears like sneakers all the time or boots or something all the time. But everything else is totally up to you, totally up to what you have the space for and what your priorities are of what you want that space to be filled with. And so again, that's all up to you, but those are just kind of a little bit, like a few of my tips, um, is make sure that you're keeping things that bring you joy. And my bet is that the first time that you move into your car, that like initial time, you're probably gonna bring too much stuff. You're probably gonna have an overload of stuff that you really realize after a little while you don't need. And so if you're moving into your car this weekend and you're staying indefinitely, I would recommend in like two to three weeks to go through all of your stuff again, especially the things like clothes and stuff like that. I would recommend going through all that stuff again because you really might realize, wow, I don't need this. Or you might realize, you know what, I actually would have done a little bit better if I had one more pair of jeans, you know? Um, but I think reevaluating and going through that semi quickly within the first like month or two, even to see what you have, to see what you use, to see what you enjoy, all that kind of stuff, I think that's really important because you'll probably overpack your first time moving into your car. You'll probably bring too much stuff. And again, you might be someone who wants to have extra and that's fine, but 
the idea of too much, meaning that uh, it might take up too much space, it might overwhelm you, you might even not know what you have, um, things like that. That's what I mean by too much because if it's something that you enjoy, then it's okay to have, you know, whatever it is. It's okay to have that kind of stuff if it's your priority. But you just want to make sure that it's not like overpowering or taking up too much space when after three weeks you might realize you don't even need it in the first place. So yeah, it's just a lot of downsizing. It's getting rid of all your stuff, whether that means going to a storage space or something like that or just completely selling it and throwing all your stuff out or giving your stuff away and then the very basic necessities are clothes shoes underwear um, toiletries uh, you know blankets pillows stuff like that um, you know like your computer or a camera or um, your phone stuff like that the super bare necessities which are very obvious things but I do have a list on my phone of things that some of these things you're already going to own potentially if you have a car in general, but some of the things on this list you might not own, but I do recommend them for if you're going to be living in your car or if you're going to be staying in your car a lot, I do recommend these things. And so, um, again, these are just my opinions on things, but I've been doing this for so long and these are the things that I found out have really helped me and that I've been happy that I've had in the car. And so I just have a, a list on my phone that like big paragraph is the list of things that I do recommend having in the car if you're going to be on a long road trip or if you're going to be living in your car. So the first thing is pepper spray um, or just something like that. I'm um, like a loud whistle. Um, I also have a keychain that like if you pull it like a really loud alarm goes off I think something like that is really good to have in the car I think that's good to have in the car anyway um, but especially if you're living in it and gonna be sleeping in it I think that's really important to have some sort of Swiss Army knife I have a couple I have a couple knives I have one little one on my keychain and I use it almost every single day because there's scissors a nail file and a knife and I literally use it almost every single day so I really do think that that's um, something that's important to have and even a bigger knife would be useful to have as well like a pocket knife I think could be very useful as well um, next is a power inverter um, I have mine right here I have like a little small one I think I got this at Target but I linked one in uh, my Amazon recommended as well this is by Duracell this a power inverter plugs into your cigarette lighter and then turns your cigarette lighter into an outlet like an actual three prong outlet and then so this one just has one outlet in it and one USB plug and so I use this a lot when I'm on the road if I need to charge my camera battery um, my computer depending on like the wattage or the voltage or whatever you might even be able to plug in like a hair straightener or something in here but this is something that I have found very very useful in my car on my travels I think it's really important to have cash and I think it's important to have cash in separate places in your car just in case. If you get your purse stolen or your wallet stolen, I think it's really important to have cash separate. I also think if you have more than one card, like a debit card and a credit card or two credit cards or something, maybe keep those separate. Again, just in case they get stolen, you would have a separate one somewhere else. I think that's super important to have at least some cash hidden somewhere. And again, that's something that I think you should have anyway, whether you live in your car or not, having separate cash, just like in a couple different places, just in case. Another one, obviously car chargers for your phone and stuff like that that's pretty obvious most of you guys are gonna have that in your car anyway and then also I have a little Bluetooth thing because my car is 2010 it did not come with Bluetooth it did come with an aux cord um, but I prefer having the Bluetooth and I will link the one that I just bought I literally just bought a brand new one and I'll link that one in my Amazon recommended as well if you like to play music or they can be used to talk on the phone and stuff as well if you don't have a Bluetooth already built into your car I know most of the newer ones do but mine's a little bit older of a car you're not too old baby you're still you're a good car um, and it's a little bit older so there's no Bluetooth so but you can buy one there and they're not very expensive I think it was like 25 bucks okay another important one all these are important I'm telling you these things because they're important and they're things that I use but one of the most important is have extra water and snacks and the snacks that I really recommend are like protein based snacks um, so like tuna and like nuts and stuff and tuna comes hold on I have it right here I keep my food within like arm's reach um, so these are a little like they're like a dollar for these little packs of tuna you can get them like Walmart and places like that for a dollar I think at other places they might go up to two dollars but you know depending anyway um, bumblebee has them and the bumblebee ones have a, a plastic spoon attached and then the star kissed ones don't but anyway I really like having some of these in the car because this is just like a very quick and easy little meal especially like that and like a bag of chips I'm good um, not a whole bag of chips but maybe but uh, also something like nuts anything like protein bars 
cars and stuff like that, having extra. Again, you kind of never know what's gonna happen. And so having a gallon of water or at least um, a couple water bottles um, and some snacks like that, super important to have at your car like at all times. Because even now, if I'm just out and about during the day, I might just grab one of those to eat if I'm hungry during the day. And then also, obviously, it's really important to have a reusable water bottle because you can get that refilled at a lot of places for free. But I definitely do think having um, just like a gallon or something in the car is super important as well. Also, depending on how much you think you're gonna cook, having a portable stove, having um, plates and cups and stuff like that could be really important, but that totally depends on how much you're gonna cook because I used to have a portable stove, but I realized I only used it like four times a year and so it was not worth taking up all that space for me in my car because it was quite large but now I know they have a lot of smaller ones they're a little bit pricier I think but if you know that you're gonna be cooking like every day if that's kind of how you want to be doing this then that's totally something that will be worth having in your car and then maybe you know like two plates um, a thing of reusable silverware that's good to have really anyway um, because even like the packets of tuna or if you're buying canned tuna or something like that having the reusable silverware and then um, also having I always recommend having Dr. Bronner's soap because you can use that for anything. You can use that to wash your body. You can use that to wash makeup brushes. You can use that to wash dishes. Dr. Bronner's, I do the unscented one. But yeah, so if you have reusable silverware and your Dr. Bronner's, you're good. You can just go to any bathroom and clean your silverware. Oh, that's something maybe I should have mentioned last week, but I'll talk about it again soon. Um, one of the things you really need when you live in your car is no shame because you're going to be washing dishes in like a random bathroom sink <laughs> and you're going to have to like not be embarrassed by that. But anyway, so what else is on here? Um, a first aid kit. I have a VW one because my mom has a Volkswagen and this one came with her car, but she was not using this one. I think she already had one that she just brought into her new car. So she gave me this one. Um, but what I have in here that I think is like the most important things to have, it's here. <laughs> um, I think it's really important to have like alcohol prep pads. I have a bunch of these. I think it's really important to have like gauze and band-aids and stuff because if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm quite prone to falling. <laughs> and so I have used the prep pads. I've used the Neosporin. Where's that? I've used, well, I have like the Target brand Neosporin. Um, I have used the tea tree oil. Um, I also have um, like a pain relief gel. Um, I think this was for like my shoulder I think and I think it's really good to have an ace bandage like a, a bandage like this and a thermometer and band-aids I think those are like that's basically all that's in here um, and then also I would keep um, like painkillers like Motrin or something like that in here as well I just have it in the house right now but having something like this is super important um, at least the minimum of that I would say at least okay what else is on here roadside assistance get roadside assistance. If it does not, mine comes with my um, car insurance, but if yours doesn't get AAA or something like that, it's, you need it. Just get, you need it, get it, get it. Get roadside assistance, you need it. Next, baby wipes. I keep mine hung right here, which is super handy for me. This is basically how I take a shower on the days that I don't go and take a shower, baby wipes. Um, and you can get, I think I have this thing uh, linked in my Amazon recommended as well. And this is refillable. So you can get new baby wipes at Target, Walmart, wherever. And they're not very expensive, but it's they're very helpful um, for whether you spill something or something like that, or your hands just like you just ate and your hands are messy, but also I definitely use them to shower definitely use them to shower and just wipe your whole body down. Another thing in terms of like taking a shower in the car, dry shampoo. Keep dry shampoo in the car because I mean, I don't wash my hair every day anyway. I wash my hair maybe twice a week anyway. And so I use dry shampoo all the time. But if you're living in your car, you might shower a little bit less than you do in an apartment. You don't have to because there are a lot of places to shower, but you just might. And so dry shampoo could be helpful if you want to fake out having clean hair. For me, Something that I have used a lot is a lint roller, which to some people might be like, oh, I don't need that, which is totally fine. But for me, I love having a lint roller in the car because I hate having, and I still do now, I have like cat hair or something on me and I, I hate having like stuff on my shirt, especially since I wear a lot of black. This one, I just, I have one of these, but I just like rebought a new one, so I haven't opened it yet. I really like this one because it closes. And so you know a lot of lint rollers, most lint rollers, it's like a handle and then the sticky part. And the sticky part is going to stick to anything. And so storing it, especially storing it in a car, might be a little difficult because um, it's gonna stick everywhere. But this one particularly that I got at Target closes. Can you see like this is the sticky part and it goes in here and it, it like spins 
and it goes in there. So then it's covered and so it does not stick to everything else in the car. So I think this is like a super handy one to have. If I find this on Amazon, I will also link that as well, but I know that I got this one at Target. Um, what else? Oh, hand sanitizer. And I would have said that three years ago. That is not a uh, current 2020 thing. That's just a forever thing. Have hand sanitizer. I prefer having the wipes, the hand sanitizer wipes, um, but just any hand sanitizer. I actually have both. I have the liquid and I have the wipes. Very, very necessary when you're living in a car. I think having a fan is super necessary as well. I have a little one that is also hanging. I have a bunch of things that hang on here. Um, I have like a little fan. You can't see it, just trust me. I have a little fan there. But yeah, I think having a fan is super important and I keep it back there because when I sleep, my head goes right there. And I think sleeping when it's too hot is very difficult. So having that fan is, uh, is a good little investment of $12. And then also, you guys know, if you've watched my videos for a while, that this is the love of my life. This I got at Target. I will link it in my Amazon recommended because I'm sure Amazon has one. This was like $12 and it is a spray bottle fan. And so you turn it on and there's a fan, but then you put water in it or like, Ice, and then when it melts a little bit, it's really, really cold water. And then you can, did you see that? There's still a little bit of water in it. <laughs> you can spray yourself with the water and then the fan and it like really cools you down. This is one of my probably most recommended products. If you're only gonna buy like one or two things of what I'm saying, this, this is like the best $12 I've ever spent. It's very, very helpful when it's too hot in the car. So in terms of sleeping, you guys know that my windows are not tinted and honestly, even if they were, I would still cover my windows. I would still be weirded out. I would still cover my windows when I'm sleeping. And so I just use t-shirts and then I use these pins. You guys know if you've watched my videos for a while, I use these pins and I just like pin up the t-shirts and just hang them on like right above my window because there's cloth. But then I also have, again, linked in my Amazon recommended, I also have essentially like those like window visor things, like those like plasticky things that like pop open, but I have one for every window in the car. And so that's super helpful as well. Um, something to just, you know, give yourself a little privacy when you're sleeping or when like you're changing or something in the car. Um, and then I like to camp. And so I do have a tent in the car that's right there. Um, and that one's just a really cheap one that I got at Target like six years ago or something and it still works. And then I also recommend for everyone to have a zero degree sleeping bag because just like if it's too hot you need a fan if it's too cold a regular blanket might not do and so a zero degree sleeping bag means that it'll keep you pretty warm up to about 25 ish degrees or so but it'll keep you alive at zero degrees and so I mean some places do get colder than that um, in the winter depending on where you are and they might even have colder they might have like negative 20 sleeping bags but depending where you are I do recommend getting like a really cold weather sleeping bag because it could like literally save your life and just keep you warm because also at the opposite of when I'm in the car and I'm too hot I can't sleep like there have been times that I've slept where it's literally freezing outside it's literally you know 30 degrees or something outside and so having a zero degree sleeping bag very 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 helpful it's definitely like worth the investment if you're going to be camping or sleeping in your car where it's really cold okay just a couple more things stuff to do so like toys games um I you know if I got back in my car right now I would have my yarn because I started crocheting a lot more recently I also have a squishy football and a squishy baseball in the trunk so having you know, like a frisbee or anything like that having something to entertain yourself or even like to to use when you're hanging out with your friends or whatever something to entertain yourself so a book a coloring book anything like that I recommend just because there might be some times where you kind of don't feel like going on a crazy adventure you don't feel like walking around and you're just kind of like blah I just want to do something in the car so maybe you put YouTube on on your phone and then you can color in your coloring book or something like that So just a couple like hobby things, you know, um, like a little like Nintendo or anything like that Like a Game Boy or whatever a Tamagotchi you guys know I just got one of those um, anyway something like that And the last few things on my list are quick dry towels for showering uh, shower shoes get shower shoes you can get like two dollar flip-flops at old navy or three dollar flip-flops at old navy get shower shoes because going into a public shower without shoes on is a little gross and then in terms of showering i'm going to make a whole video in terms of laundry and shower and um taking care of yourself like that i'm gonna make a whole separate video on that but really quickly um get a planet fitness membership 
or any I guess any gym that uh, is all over the country a membership would work but for Planet Fitness it's like 20 bucks a month and you can go to anyone in the whole country and there are quite a few and you don't even have to work out if you don't want to you can walk in go take a shower and leave I have done that many many times and again it's quite inexpensive and they have outlets they have water that you can refill your water bottle so I think having a gym membership to something that is all over the country and again I just know Planet Fitness is and that's the one that's worked for me um, super necessary when you're living in your car when you're driving around the country if you're living in your car and you're staying in one place a couple of these things might not be as necessary for you and you might be able to get away with like the $10 Planet Fitness membership which means you get access to one of them but if you have that extra $10 a month um, and you do any traveling I would recommend doing that if that is something that you could afford um, it is very helpful to be able to shower in most cities or most towns or most places across the country so I think that's gonna be it for this video thank you guys so much for watching I hope that you enjoyed this video just talking about the things that I personally think are necessary to have in the car and just a little talk about downsizing and stuff like that obviously there are other things that are very helpful to have in the car that I just didn't mention or that I forgot to mention but then also for everyone it's gonna be super different what's really important to have in the car with you but those are just some of my suggestions that I have found that were really useful for me over the years and I know that it's so easy when you're doing something different to over buy to almost over plan and so I would say you probably don't need as much as you think you do but there are a couple things I've had a lot of people ask me about there's like a blow-up inflatable thing that you can get that basically covers your whole back seat that almost turns into like an inflatable bed I've had a lot of people ask me about that could it be useful and comfortable sure would I get it um, maybe, but I don't think it's a necessity. You know what I mean? I think there's a difference between necessities and then things that are really, really helpful but not necessities and then things that could be nice to have but are really not necessities at all. And so it just totally depends on your comfort level, on what you enjoy, on what you like, on what would make you feel safe, everything like that, and it's different for everyone. So I just wanted to give you a list of some of the things that I really think are important and even things like, you know, like glasses cleaners and stuff like that. There are other things that I did not mention, but I know that you guys also probably have a ton of things that you use. And so if you're someone who has has been living in your car or is about to let me know in the comments so that everyone else can see as well something maybe that I did not list but that you see as necessary as well because I know that I did not list everything that uh, people would buy or seem necessary for them so it'd be really good if other people could see other people's suggestions as well because you guys know I love having the community here that we can all help each other and so anything that I did not mention that you think is also super necessary or helpful let us know in the comments so we can all like read them and get more ideas and tips from everyone else but yeah I guess that's gonna be it please make sure that you're subscribed I really really hope that you are it means the world to me and click the notification bell and follow me on Instagram as well if you want for more daily updates and hanging out with me over on Instagram but yeah I guess that's gonna be it thanks again for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day I love you Jesus loves you and I'll talk to you later bye